Hi there, thanks for checking out our channel. Hopefully this uh, video is going to be of some use for you and benefit you in some way. Um, this is just going to be kind of an overview, uh, semi-review overview of this unit. Uh, this is a, um, a Gallagher M1000. Uh, it's a 10 store jewel unit. Uh, it's one that Gallagher made from about 2005 to about 2000. Uh, 16, 17 or so, somewhere in that range. Um, I'll kind of give you a little story about these things a little bit, tell you what's been good and bad about them over the years. Um, so uh, before we get too far along, uh, let me, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, we'd be happy to for that. Uh, if you want to go down to the description area below everything, a little tab there, i got a couple links there for our website, spencerfixer.com is our site. And we also work on the cattle scales and low bars for, for the different brands. We work on about any brand you can think of. Uh, our website for that is cattlescalerepair.com. Uh, but you can call us, text us, email us, uh, ask questions down below in the comments area if you want. Um, but we do give free quotes and everything that comes into us. We work on about any brand you can think of. Uh, whether it's 50, 60 years old or new, we work on about anything. Um, so, but we'll get in this thing real quick and kind of talk about, it. I'm not going to take it apart and go through the inside of it. Uh, I might, depends on how much I, how I feel about going through all that crap. <coughs> Basically, just want to give a little overview of how this thing works and uh, what's been good about it over the years, what's been bad about it over the years. Um, it's standard 110, you know, 110, 120 volt unit. Uh, the nice thing I like about it is it has this digital display on this little lens right here and has a row of lights that flash up and down here. And we're going powered on. Show 7.5 kV. And oh, it also has this little check mark light. Which that doesn't really mean anything. It's just a power light tells you to pay the powers on. But sometimes these little there's an LED bulb behind there. Sometimes it gets shifted, bumped, and moves a little bit one way or the other, uh, or a little dirt gets up underneath there somehow and blocks that. But if this thing's lighting up and clicking, doing something. Uh, then you know, hey, the power's on. So um, now, early on when they came out with this model back in 2005, up until about 2008 or nine, they used one style of board, and then they made a change and went to a second version board. The early version boards were fairly good. They not too many issues with them. Uh, they came out that second version board uh, about 2008 or nine or seven or eight, somewhere in that range, probably 2008 or nine. And they used it up until about 2015, 16 or so. And the issues with those with the second version board and it wasn't same issue with the other older version boards uh there's a bunch of surface mount stuff on those boards they do use um old school electronics on them a little bit but there are some of those surface mount things a lot of digital electronics and things on them and there's a big cluster of these little parts it's about if you were to look at the back side of the board uh, which would be, be sitting about right here on the board this one doesn't have that problem but there's a big cluster of parts. I mean, there's like 50 of them all scattered around. Maybe not 50, probably like 20, but it looks like 50. But there's all a bunch of them all over the place. And um, they'll, they'll get hot and go out and burn out and stuff like that. And uh, sometimes it happens from lightning or stress. Sometimes it just goes bad from age. But most times uh, they don't go bad very often unless this has got an older, uh, been around for a while, a lightning gets a hold of it, or maybe a bad shortened the fence causes them to get a little hot and working hard. The good thing about them is, transformers in these things hardly ever go bad they they've been using this, the style of transformer that's in this has been used well before this model was ever around they started using a variation of the transform back in the 80s and uh, they actually used a, a variation of the same transformer not the same one but uh, uh looks like it but it's different internals using other models and they've been using those for since then all the way till now they still use them today they'll still gallagher's transformers on most of their models are fairly well made uh, not too many issues with them at all um the capacitors uh that's what was wrong with this one this one had a bad capacitor in it, in it. um you know so pretty cheap uh, repair on the thing and uh, just an older unit, and the transfer, the capacitor just went bad from age. Uh, this one is a, um, if you look at the back of a, 
Gallagher unit or wherever the stickers are hiding at. Look at the first uh, five digits if you really care. Uh, if it's 1999 and later on they went to a, a, a date code with the serial numbers. If it was before 1999, they had a sequential number and there's no date code in it. But uh, if you look at uh, this one, it says 06176. Let's look at the first five. The last five don't really matter. But the first two is the year. The third and the fourth number is the week of that year. And the fifth number is the day of that week of that year. So this was manufactured on the sixth day of the 17th week of 2006. So this thing has got 14 years age on it based on when it was built. Um, I'm not sure when I bought it. It's a pretty nice looking unit for being 14 years old. But the capacitor finally went out on it. So they had a new capacitor in it, plugged it in, went to working just fine. So sometimes it's just a capacitor, sometimes it's more than that. So, um, and then uh, when they came out, the newest style board on there, basically all those little problems they had in that little section of board, they fixed all that. They came out with a brand new board uh, back in like 2015 or 16 or so, somewhere in that range, and basically just revamped the whole inner guts of these things. This was a very... A pretty good model in general uh, for the most part, um, but they had a little problem in, in the uh, the board right there. Other than that, it was a, that was only Achilles heels to the thing. Uh, this there's the two boards, the main module board, and they have a display board that sits up in here. That bar board hardly ever goes bad unless it's gotten lightning damage. Sometimes there's a cable that ties the two together, and if lightning gets on on that cable and feeds into this board, sometimes it can damage it. Um, not a crucial thing, uh, you know, if you, if you don't care about this gauge not working, uh, I think it will, sometimes will run without it, uh, depends on how it's been damaged, sometimes it's been damaged a certain way, it won't run without it, um, but that's the good thing, if you got one of these things and it needs to be worked on, I mean, send it in to us, we'd be happy to take a peek at it, uh, what I like about it is this gauge, and there are, there's another brand out there called Parmac. Parmac has some units with some digital gauges on there, but this is an accurate gauge where uh, Parmacs are kind of a gimmicky gauge. They do the same thing, but this actually shows exactly what the unit is trying to put out, where Parmacs will say like 13,000, you know, 13 kV or 15 kV or 12 kV. It's not putting out that much. It's only putting out about seven to 9,000, which is a 7.6. So we're going to turn it off here. We'll take the knobs loose. Whoops. And we'll put the tester across there. And we'll see what it puts out. Um, if you want a good quality fence tester, we don't sell them. We're just a repair place. But the one that we use here is a Gallagher digital fence voltmeter. Uh, it's kind of an orange see-through case on it. We use this to test any brand that we get in. Uh, as long as it's solid state or a low impedance, we'll use this one. Um, this is a good tester because it, it um, will work on any brand a fence charger you have, and it's very, very accurate. And also, they don't hardly ever go bad, but when they, if they ever have a problem, they can be fixed. Uh, they're not a throwaway. Most other brands of fence testers, if they go bad, you throw it away and have to buy another one. The only thing is they're a little expensive. They're about 50 to 60 bucks for one of these things, but they're made to go out go out on the fence. You have this little ground probe, stick that in the dirt, little brass tab, lay that on the fence, and it shows up a, a number on here, and it gets power from the fence, so there's not an on-off button. You just put it on there, and it goes to working. So we're going to put – this is the ground side. This is the fence side. Let's put the ground probe on the ground, put the fence side on the fence side. So my test is showing 7.2, 7.3. So – Almost identical to what uh, what the display up here shows. If you worked on a Parmac or had a Parmac that you were uh, fiddling around with and used one of these testers on there, you test it on its own. It read um, 13.9 on the front of the Parmac and put one of these on there. It's going to read like 8.4 or something like that. Those uh, Parmacs are they're gimmicky on the display, but the displays do have a function. And it's the same with these Gallagher. I'll show you what they do. So say you're out in the field, or you're walking by one day, and this is hanging up in your barn, and you walk by one day, and it shows 7.6. And you're like, okay, well, you test your fence, it's showing 7.5.
and then you go out, uh, you know, two or three weeks later, a month or two later, and you walk out there and the charger shows, you know, 3.5, and you're like, hmm, that's kind of strange. You go up to, to your um, fence, you test it, it's 2.9. Like, wow, why's my fence so low? Well, what's nice about this gauge with the number and the lights, this is kind of your fence performance gauge. So as you get a load, and we're going to put 150 ohm, this is a 20 watt, 150 ohm resistor. We're going to put across there. We're going to go across the fencing ground. So this is going to simulate a fairly bad fence with a bunch of shorts in it, and, you know, a bunch of grass, a bad short from a wire up to a T-post, you know, something like that. So I'm going to touch it across ground and fence. And you see it shows 4.3 kV, and the lights are only going about halfway up. So that, tell, that would tell you when you walk by, hey, I've got a bad short somewhere. So if you got there, you turn your, you turn your charger off, you go out to the fence. Um, oh, real quick, before you go out and check your fence, unhook your fence and ground from the unit and plug it back in. If the voltage goes right back up high, you know, the charger is okay. But if you unhook it from the fence and ground, it still stays down low, then the problem's likely not in the fence, probably in, or likely not uh, in the fence, yeah, not in the fence, probably in the charger. So when you go up there and you fix your problem in the fence, you plug it back in and it goes back up a little higher, then you know, okay, I've, I'm heading in the right direction. I'm fixing my problems. I know I've got a problem, you know, still maybe in the fence if it's not quite up to snuff. But as long as you're reading about 4 kV or higher, that's about minimum you want to see coming out of a, uh, on your fence. If it's much lower than that, you're going to have a hard time keeping animals in or out. Um, what we'll do is we'll get a... Uh, we're going to go across fencing ground. We'll see the spark it throws. Nice, nice bright spark. I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, but it's a nice uh, bright spark. Uh, another thing I like about them, sometimes, well, sometimes these stupid little red and green caps will pop out and fall on the ground, and then the knobs will still be there, but the caps will fall out or whatever. If you're not sure which wire goes where because the caps have fallen out, or you got one but not the other, if you look at the front of the case, they've got a ground so ground symbol engraved in there, and a lightning bolt for the hot side engraved in there, so it's always on the case, so you always know where it's at. It's not like a little sticker that peels off or falls off. You can just look right at it. So we're going to uh, put that on there. Put that on there. But this is a, a really good unit. They, Gallagher sold uh, a bunch of these things. You can still find them. I mean, there's they've only been discontinued for about three years or so, two, three years. And um, But all the parts are made for them. You can get everything for them. You get cords, cases, knobs, bolts, circuit boards, you know, all kinds of stuff for them. So uh, everything's still made for them. They're not a throwaway deal. I mean, they were selling for $400 or more for a, a new one. Uh, when they were being built still. Um, these were re were replaced by, I think the M1100 would be kind of comparable nowadays. Uh, Gallagher doesn't make a plug-in slash battery unit called an MB1000. Uh, it's a plug-in or battery-powered unit. Uh, it's not in, anywhere close to this kind of style of unit. It's not, they don't share any of the same guts. They may share the same capacitor, possibly. That's about it. Everything else on it inside and out is completely different. Um, but uh, hopefully you like this video. Like I said, this is a good good unit. So if you've got one that's broken, don't throw it away. I mean, go buy a new one if you want of some sort. But if you want your old one fixed, send it in to us. We'll be happy to take a peek at it for you. If you don't charge anything for looking at it, it's always a free quote. 18-month warranties and everything that we work on uh, repair-wise. And lightning damage is part of our warranty. Um, but remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Tell your friends about us. I mean, share this video to a friend. You know, they got one. Uh, we work on all brands, all ages, so we're not really particular to any particular brand. Uh, we have the ones we like to work on because of just they're fun to work on. And then we have the ones that come in for repair that we just despise working on because we're sick of seeing them all the time. Uh, we don't get too many Gallagher uh, 1000s in. We get one here, one there. They do come in uh not weekly probably monthly probably get one one two a month uh or maybe one every other month we get them in periodically they're not i mean sold thousands of them and they were around for 16 7, 15 16 17 years something like that they're around for 
uh, quite some time. So uh, there's a lot of them out there. I sold a boatload of them. Um, but well, that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to check out more of our videos, we've got 350 plus videos on YouTube of all kinds of electric fence stuff, how to work on one, how to test them, the features of one, reviews, uh, good and bad reviews on things. And we also have some videos on uh, cattle scales and low bars and stuff out there as well, uh, how to test them and sometimes somehow, some of them were how to repair them, but those ones are a little more tricky to work on. Uh, but anyways, until we do another video of how to work on one, we will see you guys later on.